Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I wanted to take the time today and kind of discuss shop made versus purchased tooling. So, um, other than the boring head holder, chuck, micrometer, and slitting saw arbor, everything seen has been made in someone's shop, commercial or not. Um, so I wanted to just go through and discuss kind of the merits and benefits. So one of the big merits is you can get exactly what you need when you need it. Um, case in point, uh, this micrometer stand I made the other day. I wanted something big enough to take a six inch micrometer or even a 10 inch micrometer without tipping over. And I used a cast iron ingot. So it's basically an angry brick at this point. Um, it works really well. It's at a good, comfortable angle, about 45 degrees plus or minus. I didn't get super precision on it. It just works. Um, benefit to this, I made exactly what I wanted when I need it. It was about a four and a half hour project and I didn't pay for any of the materials. Uh, actually, this bolt head is off a Hendrickson suspension bolt used and the shaft off that bolt made the bar that this boring head, this boring bar head attaches to. So waste not, want not in this shop. Uh, this is scrap cast iron. This is a cylinder square that is, I think, sufficiently accurate for everything I do in this shop. It's about two ten thousandths over its whole height range. Um, as tested with our other shop made tool, a squareness comparator. And these just weren't available um, for something that I could afford and was comfortable paying, so I didn't pay for one, I made one. And that's one of the nice things you get about shop made tooling is you can kind of just make what you need when you need it. You're not really married to purchasing some off the shelf solution. But the downside is if it's a consumable item that wears out and breaks, it's not always a great idea because, you know, if you're kind of a busy commercial shop and something breaks and it's necessary for jobs coming in, it might actually be faster and cheaper for you to overnight it, where buying a thousand dollar squareness comparator for some shops might be cheaper than taking three or four hours to make it like I did. Um, you know, in one, two, three blocks are a good example. Now I did not make this one, two, three block. I got it in a lot of parts, but it's marked with the guy's initials. Um, I have a lot of his tools. I, I can't remember it was, I don't think his name really matters. Uh, you know, I believe he made these machinist jacks as well. I mean, these are lovely setup tools. Uh, they're a really good height actually compared to the Grizzly ones. They, they're much lower profile. Um, the shorter, the better for machinist jacks in my opinion. But you know, it, these are probably an apprentice project where you're learning chamfering, drilling straight holes, there's a lot to learn and a lot that can be learned on these one, two, three blocks. And, you know, another thing I got in a lot is this arbor is not factory. Uh, this is shop made. So someone can use a little Jacobs number one, a drill chuck in a half inch arbor. Um, because if you're using a lot of half inch tools, that's really useful to swap out. It's just fast. And you know, that has convenience. And another shop made tool, I did make the arbor for this for a slitting saw. Uh, this is another one of those things where I didn't want to wait three or four days to go get an affordable arbor. I just made one out of, again, an old bolt. Um, a lot of the high strength suspension bolts are, you know, heat treated. They're basically the equivalent of 4140 high strength pre hard. So they're like Rockwell C30. It's really tough, durable stuff. Um, it does well for shop tooling. But on the other end of the spectrum, this is a cat's head for use in a steady rest for shafts that I can't damage, especially gun barrel work. So you actually can see, I didn't even bother tapping the holes straight because it doesn't matter the way you dial it in. Um, you know, it's basically a four jaw chuck. It doesn't really matter if the holes are straight 
and that has a useful life measured in hours. So, you know, the aluminum doesn't last very long. The brass screws don't last very long. I'm just not that concerned with it being perfect. It just, it works. And it doesn't really add anything to the setup time. Now, another kind of cool thing is this is a fly cutter adapter for a boring head. I'll show you how it works. But it essentially slips in there and you can use it as a fly cutter. Now you'd have to tap this cutter down. Um, it's not strictly a fly cutter. This also works for deep inside bores. There's a lot of different ways you can use that tool, not just as the fly cutter. You know, so ideally your tools as much as humanly possible are multi-purpose. You know, I'm a big believer on multi-purpose tools. Now, unfortunately, the fellow who ground that ground it oversized a bit, which is not unheard of. Um, it does need a little tappy tap tap to adjust. Now, another cool thing is this is another shop made tool. This just sticks your boring bar out farther. Um, and this gives you some options you wouldn't have before with how to hold on to a boring bar. Um, this basically 90 degree adapter. Uh, it, one of the benefits to it, if you're doing an inside bore like this, is you don't have to offset the boring bar as much with the head or at all. And if you're running carbide and carbide speeds, that can help your balance quite a bit. Now, this is another fly cutter adapter for my big boring head, my three inch bridge port. Where did I put that? I don't know. I'm not chasing it around on camera. So there's a lot of benefits to that. You can get exactly what you want when you need it. You know, certain tools like these don't wear out. These um, adapters, I think they're great. Squareness comparators don't really wear out. I'm a big proponent of tools that are either one time or limited use and or have extremely long life cycles. Now you can see this got ground on every surface. It got chamfered there. Love went into this. Same thing with my squareness comparator because those tools have very long life cycles. This got the absolute bare minimum of effort to make a serviceable tool. And my effort in shop made tools is directly related to the length of its life cycle. Uh, when it's a one time use tool or extremely limited use tool, they don't need to be pretty. They just need to work. Now, thanks for watching guys. I hope this kind of inspires, especially guys getting started to start making more and more complex stuff. Um, I think as kind of a first project, this type of boring bar shaft is pretty good. Um, you don't necessarily have to do precision threading, but it's a good thing about turning to diameters, learning how to measure threads, stuff like that. I mean, this little Jacob's taper adapter is actually another good one because that learn that you'll have to learn how to do a precision taper on that. Um, cutting a precision taper isn't as easy as you think. And a lot of these shop made tools are really good skill builders because you know, no surface on this mic stand, it needs to be precision. I actually do the whole thing to layout lines, but you know, it's a good lesson in cutting angled slots to width. And also you see this feature here, this kind of art deco thing. I had to cut that because the end mill I have wasn't long enough to cut this pocket full depth. So, you know, you get a lot of kind of teachable moments about order of operations planning and thinking about the limitation of your existing equipment. And this is another good project because we get single point threading. Um, you could single point internal thread this. I cut it with a tap. Um, you get, you know, kind of measurement planning, but there's two press fits on this shaft. You know, there's the press fit for this rod and there's the press fit for the bolt head. So this, um, this assembly here, is actually four pieces, not two. Um, 
and you know I used a three thousandths interference fit on both of these plus Loctite six twenty. They're not going anywhere, um, but you know it's just it's fun to sort of you know fool around in the shop on projects that don't really matter. And I think this is a great hobby project. Um, the plans for this are inspired by the Make It From Metal one. I omitted these chamfers, um, heavy chamfers on each side. I don't think they're strictly necessary, uh, especially with my use case of primarily using it with larger micrometers. Now, I don't really use small mics with stands very often. I don't prefer to. I can hold them in my hands quite comfortably. So that's just personal preference. Um, you know have fun in the shop guys like go out shop made toolings really awesome and satisfying as a hobbyist because the sky's the limit really and there's no reason not to just go out have fun try something new so i really hope you enjoyed this i hope this inspires someone to just go out and have fun